you may not notice, but under these shades are some very bloodshot eyes, because I truly did not know what I was getting myself into in this game. No Man's Sky was originally announced back in 2013, and of all things, the VGXs. Yeah, that absolutely cringe-worth thing with Joel McHale and Jeff Keighley. Holy crap! The main feature of No Man's Sky is its procedurally generated universe, where every planet, galaxy, life form, environment, you name it, has been created through a series of algorithms, to where this game proudly touts over 18 quintillion planets. Quintrillion! That's 18 zeros! With such a small team, with it being only 4 when the game was first announced, I couldn't help but feel sceptical. But when the game finally came out on PS4 and PC, I decided to check it out. Now, reviewing No Man's Sky is an interesting task. I mean, sure, talking about controls, graphics, basic gameplay will be easy, but everyone's experience is different. So allow me to tell you my journey through No Man's Sky. Beginning the game flying through the stars, I wake up on a random planet with nothing more than a crash ship, a jetpack, and something called a multi-tool. Using it, I'm able to extract elements from my surroundings, and this is Minecraft. Yeah, you've probably heard that comparison a lot, but it wears out fast as I'm happily extracting some iron when I'm suddenly attacked by sentinel drones. Realizing the multi-tool doesn't do jack as an offensive tool, I quickly get outnumbered and start to run away, and I'm dead. Thankfully, unlike Minecraft, while you do lose your inventory, you are able to visit your grave and get it back. I spent the next hour or so wandering around finding iron, plutonium, platinum, and many other elements, as well as these abandoned stations full of little goodies. Not to mention seeing all these absolute bizarre creatures. I need to find one element in particular and wooden turp on my screen. Turns out I had to find these giant monoliths and mine those. After spending a few hours and even finding gold deposits, my ship was fixed, but I'd spent so much time on this planet I didn't want to leave. But after cruising along the skies, I finally left the atmosphere into the stars. I arrived at a space station after a few hours, and so far my experience has been mining a bunch of elements, wondering what God was smoking when he created these animals, and being told time and time again I need a fucking Atlas Pass to get into places. Each galaxy has a space station and a certain number of planets. I've even been to galaxies that have planets with moons, or a galaxy with one lonely planet. And each of these have their own randomly generated names that look like the ingredients on a shampoo bottle. Every planet has its own terrain and environment, sometimes too hot, sometimes too cold, and sometimes just right. And then other times it's just radioactive. You'll be spending a lot of time meeting a large range of alien species, from rejected Doctor Who characters, to Daft Punk understudies, although I must say it's great seeing Wheatley back on his feet. Hey, how's it going? You'll spend most of your time gradually learning their languages and acquiring blueprints. Which brings me to crafting. Once again, unlike Minecraft, the crafting here is actually straightforward. You will need lots of isotopes to power your ship, weapons and health, and things like titanium for your shields. The only real issue is maintaining inventory space. You can upgrade your suit, but the only way to upgrade your ship is to just buy a new ship. When you're at a space station or trading post, the other races will land their ship and you can go to any of them. You can buy or sell resources naturally, or downright buy their ship. Although it won't be cheap. And for me, it's been hard to give up my adorable little starter. <laughs> Although, when you leave a planet with a lot of inventory, you could run into space pirates, and early on they can destroy you fairly quick. While the procedural thing is absolutely amazing, this does mean that the polish of handcrafted planets isn't there. Don't get me wrong, these don't look ugly at all, but flying along the planets and seeing the topography literally dissolve and change is kind of unimmersive. 
but I can't understand why. These planets are huge. Like, literal planet huge. You could spend hours, days, just on one planet or galaxy. Just as well, though, that while this is a survival game in some sorts, having to watch out for your surroundings and the atmosphere of the planet, this game isn't screaming at you for food, water, or sleep every five seconds. Although, I need to tell you one thing. This isn't low! So you're probably asking me, what's the point of all this? Well, there is a story you can follow if you want, but while I will throw up where you should go next, you really are doing it at your own pace. I just spent hours mining random planets, getting ecstatic when I found a cave full of plutonium and gold, and buying low and selling high. It's a sort of game where you start at 5pm, following a beacon to a colonial outpost, only to continuously go, ooh, what's that? And I'll just go here first. And by the time you remember what you're doing, it's 10.30 at night, the house is dark, you're hungry, the cat is starving, and you're working early the next day. <laughs> there are certainly things I could suggest, like a space station intergalactic storage. Items that I know I need, but don't really want clogging up my main inventory. I could put them here and pick them up on any space station when I need them. Or, how about assigning elements to the D-pad so I could quickly charge my ship before getting shot down? Well, too late. While it surely won't be everyone's cup of tea, No Man's Sky really is something else. But... I know there's been a lot of negative reception concerning performance of the PC release, and certain apparent promised features not being present. But honestly, none of that has really bothered me. I personally found myself having an absolute relaxing time flying about the stars, initiating warp drive, and then getting shot down by pirates. Oh well, can't win them all. <laughs> I'm Enigma, and we'll see you all next time. Say, what happened to the other core? Space. Huh.